Hello, and welcome to the second in a series of video tutorials about the data visualization software called ANTS. In the last video, we had only just begun to explore the software capabilities and potential applications, and hopefully that was enough to get you excited and eager to learn more about this powerful data visualization tool. In this video, we'll be discussing where to download the ANTS application, getting up to speed on actually using it, saving our work, and then loading save files back into ANTS. To download ANTS, go to openants.com. Click on the Download ANTS link. As I mentioned in the last video, ANTS is available for Microsoft Windows, Linux, and Mac OS X. The version we'll be downloading and running today is for Windows. The files listed here are all hosted on SourceForge. So another way to download is to go to SourceForge and search for ANTS. Click the SourceForge link to download the ANTS zip. Once downloaded, extract the contents to a convenient location on your hard drive and open the folder. Instead of following an incremental version number, ANTS versions are designated by the date of their release. As of now, the current version of ANTS is May 5, 2012. Inside the unzipped ANTS folder are the source code files and the release folder. Let's talk about what's inside the ANTS release folder. Sorted alphabetically, at the top is ANTS CSV, the folder that holds the CSV files ANTS uses to read and write attributes. Next is ANTS Docs, which contains a PDF version of the software manual. This document will help you understand more of the software features and operations that we don't cover in this video. Moving down the list, we have ANTS Maps, the folder where object texture files are stored You'll find a few images already in this folder, and in a later video, I'll demonstrate how they can be mapped to objects or grids within the application. Once unzipped, ANTS is actually ready to run. No installation is necessary unless you're using Windows XP, in which case you should open up the folder called Install Win XP and follow the directions in the README file. Now we're at the actual ANTS executable file, currently named ants underscore b dot exe. Most of you have likely already run this in a fit of excitement and have seen the application load to the default state. For those of you who haven't, pause this video and give it a whirl. There's nothing you can't undo in the software, so don't hold back the urge to explore. When the software is running, pressing the escape key will toggle full screen mode, and clicking the X in the top right corner will close the program. Upon running, ANTS opens two windows, the graphing window and the console window. The console serves as the primary message output for the user, and file loading progress will be displayed here as well. Nearly all user actions performed in ANTS will show up in the console, so it's a great way to get feedback on how certain actions change the state of the software. Currently, this window functions as feedback only so you'll be unable to enter commands directly like you would with a standard Windows command line tool. The other window is the graphing window. This is where your visualizations will load in ANTS. You can resize a window to your liking by grabbing the bottom right corner with the mouse, or toggle full screen mode by pushing the escape key. The graphing window has a basic heads up display, or HUD. The top left section is referred to as the compass, and displays the position and orientation of the currently active object. If the camera is selected, it will display the altitude and coordinates of the camera along with the direction or bearing it is facing and vertical angle. If a pin object is selected, the coordinates of the pin will be displayed with the altitude and orientation. In the bottom left, there is another feedback display similar to the console window. Pushing the M key will cycle through different HUD settings, from expanded view to hidden. Now that we've got our bearings in the graphing window, let's move on to working with objects. I'm going to push the N key to drop, or create, a new pin object. 
think N as in new. Notice the shape of this object. It kind of looks like an ice cream cone with a torus around it, right? That cone is the pin geometry type, and the torus is the child node geometry type. That's the default root pin object in ANTS. The new pin is selected by default. You can tell what objects are selected by the color of their wireframe. Yellow means selected, red is not selected. A scene in ANTS could have one pin or it could have millions of pins. It just depends on the data you're visualizing. By default, every root pin has a child node attached to it in a tree topology. While root pins are independent of each other, child nodes are attached to their parents in the tree relative to the topology of the parent. Let's move on to talking about some basic navigation concepts using the mouse and keyboard. Moving around in the 3D graphing environment can be tricky at first, but with a little practice you'll be zipping through the scene like a pro. I've gone ahead and dropped two more pins just for reference. Follow along with me as I demonstrate basic movement operations in ANTS. First, let's make sure we don't have the root pin object selected. Click the right mouse button off of the pin to deselect it. Using the WSAD keys, you can move forward, backward, left, and right. Arrow keys control the rotation, so up arrow rotates up, down arrow rotates down, left arrow rotates left, and right arrow rotates right. Now from our vantage point, that kind of looked like we were moving at a snail's pace. That's where the shift key comes in handy. Holding the shift key down while using WSAD or the arrow keys will significantly speed up your movement. Using a standard two button mouse makes navigation even easier. Click and hold the left mouse button to rotate your view. When you hold the left mouse button and have an object selected, your view will pivot around the object. Clicking and holding the right mouse button lets you fly around the scene, but the tilt angle of your view field will be fixed to where you set it using the left mouse button. When used simultaneously, the left and right mouse buttons give you an even quicker way of moving around. A nice shortcut to reorient yourself to a selected pin is to click the left and right mouse button at the same time. This will automatically snap your view back to the last pin you selected. The last thing we're going to do in this video is save our work and then load it back into ANTS. It is important to understand that ANTS does not save a proprietary file type like other software applications. When you save, you're telling ANTS to record every detail of the scene and its objects to a CSV file. Pushing the K button will save the current state of the program to a CSV file in the ANTS CSV folder. Saved CSV files are automatically timestamped with the following convention, ANTS, year, month, date, and time. Time reference adheres to military conventions. Let's go to the ANTS folder and find our CSV file. Loading CSV files back into ANTS is easy. Open the application and press the L button. Think L for load. The software will prompt you with a pop-up window where you can browse to the location of the CSV file on your hard drive. Here we can see the CSV file we exported earlier has been loaded back into ANTS. That does it for this tutorial. In the next video, we're going to spend time looking closely at the contents of the CSV file and see how they relate to visualizations represented in ANTS. For those of you who can't wait, feel free to read up on the state file reference in the ANTS manual and open the CSV file in a spreadsheet editor to see how attribute data are stored.